Since the dawn of civilization, the sun has had a profound impact on our lives. It shapes our sense of time, it affects our health. We've tried to harness its power and reveal its secrets. For most of history, in Europe and North America, having a tan wasn't desirable as it was a sign of working outdoors under the sun. But that all started to change thanks to some medical discoveries that happened in the late 19th century. A couple of physicians discovered that tuberculosis bacteria could be killed using natural sunlight, and this led to the establishment of special hospitals or sanatoria where people could be treated using natural daylight. By being wheeled out into the sunshine, tuberculosis lesions on the skin could be treated and even cured using daylight. These medical breakthroughs started to have a wider effect on people's attitudes to being out in the sun. You had exclusive resorts in places like the Alps, where people would go and pay large amounts of money to enjoy high quality Swiss sunshine. You even had remarkable things like children being out in the snow skiing in their underpants to maximize the amount of sun exposure that they got. In the 1920s and 30s, people were encouraged to get out in the sun as much as possible. Swimsuits were redesigned to show off more skin. This was partly for fashion reasons, but also to maximize the amount of sun exposure, which was seen as being good for your health. In Britain in particular, lidos were built in city centers so that people could get out in the sun and the fresh air and get a natural healthy tan. And seaside holidays became increasingly popular with resorts like Western Supermare and Scarborough being advertised by the railway lines. But all this sun exposure came at a cost. In the 1950s, 60s and 70s, there was a dramatic rise in what had previously been a very rare form of cancer, melanoma. There was an increasing realization that sunshine wasn't a universal health benefit, that it was actually something that could be really dangerous to human health. The countries that are most hit by skin cancer are the countries like Australia and New Zealand, where there's fair-skinned people living in very sunny climates. The earliest campaigns were started in the early 1980s and they gathered strength for the next 10, 20 years. Public health campaigns can bring a lot of good ideas to mind. Where there's been a lot of resources put into public awareness campaigns, there's been a very gratifying gradual change in the rates and for the first time ever we've seen rates starting to downturn where there's been investment in skin cancer campaigns. A lot of the 21st century research is now turning into, of course, much more high-tech research, looking at genetics and how this interacts with ultraviolet. And also the immune system is known to be extremely important in how a human being can combat skin cancer. Research really underpins our knowledge of what's happening with the skin. This is our only way that we can actually get treatment as well, is to understand the causes, try and combat that as well we can by knowing the, the real essence of the causation. That's what uh, research is going to always tell us. Today, we have a much more nuanced attitude to being out in the sun. We know we need a certain amount of sunshine to maintain healthy bodies and good mental health, but there are also huge dangers associated with getting sunburnt and being out in the sun too much.